Hello everyone, welcome to this week's video where we are going to be discussing artificial intelligence in biomedical ethics. My main goal this week is twofold. First, I want to give you an example of moral theorizing and moral considerations and how they come into play before we start discussing moral theories. And secondly, I also want to explain my pretty hardline stance against the use of AI in my classes and why I think it is especially egregious to use artificial intelligence to make important decisions in the context of learning about biomedical ethics. To begin with, moral dilemmas are situations where moral considerations point both in favor and against a particular point or a particular course of action. Artificial intelligence presents a moral dilemma in that there are both good moral reasons to permit the use of artificial intelligence and good moral reasons to prohibit or be cautious about its use. In this video, we're going to be discussing some of these moral considerations that ethicists might bring to the table when thinking about artificial intelligence so that you can have a good example of a moral argument before we start getting into theories about morality. I think that there's one major net benefit to the use of artificial intelligence. It promises to drastically reduce the amount of human labor necessary to produce certain kinds of products or do certain kinds of labor. For example, if you ask ChatGPT or a similar AI program to write a resume or an affidavit, it can do so pretty reliably and much more quickly than a normal human being can produce these documents, especially from scratch. AI is also developing to be better at better, to become better and better at certain functionalities such as creating visual art, music, or film, once again, entirely from scratch. The development of new technologies to reduce labor time is not morally trivial. Technology allows for human labor to become vastly more efficient so that we can achieve a wider array of moral purposes than we otherwise might be able to achieve within our lifetime. The AI can reduce tedious and unnecessary human labor is an unambiguous moral good. The drawback is that unfortunately AI has many negative aspects as well that are closely related to how these AI systems actually work. Programs like ChatGPT are called LLMs, large language models. These models work by scouring a huge data set, often like the entirety of the internet, essentially. And it comes to associate words as symbols with certain kinds of value, and it reproduces patterns that it finds within its data set to approximate what someone, hopefully someone intelligent, would say on the internet. This means that AI can't produce new information, only approximation of what you might expect from this data set. And it also means that AI is prone to error. Sometimes an answer to a question can't be reliably extracted from the data set. Other times, AI interprets jokes and similar non-serious locutions as serious assertions and produces wildly inaccurate results. Another example of the limitations of these LLM models are argumentative papers, what I'm ultimately asking you to do in my class. Chat, GPT, and similar models don't have a point of view that they offer on any given question or problem, and can, at best, produce an approximation of what others have already said about the topic at hand. This is part of why I don't allow the use of AI in my classes. I'm looking to help your thinking. I'm looking to evaluate your work. And AI is simply not your thinking or your work. Anyone could produce it. It has nothing, no correlation, for example, with your critical thinking abilities. Although it can produce a philosophy paper in an instant, it can't produce a good philosophy paper one that is useful for our purposes within this class or 
Even moreover, I would argue it's not really useful to the wider public or for anything besides fooling your professor and getting a grade. I mean, I doubt that most of the students that I've had who use AI to produce these papers even read them, for example. Consequently, uh, while AI is often sold to us as the solution to all of our problems, by the nature of how it works, it can't really do that. There are also worries that are related to our fostering dependence on artificial intelligence to, in a way, think, write, and express ideas for us. Studies have shown that using AI for certain tasks, such as writing, outlining, editing, etc., actually atrophies these abilities for you. AI is not a tool for you to write or outline or edit. It does the task for you. And in so doing, you don't develop your own skills or authorial, authorial voice. And your creative muscle, you know, that helps you do writing withers away. There's also the question of whether or how much you want to rely on the product of a giant corporation for your own thinking. OpenAI, Facebook, Twitter, and other platforms for artificial intelligence are billion-dollar multinational companies with their own interests and aspirations, mainly profit. The AI outputs only what the algorithm and data set determine it to output. It's not really what people imagine where it has its own mind. Think of it more like your printer, right? Your printer prints out words, right? But it doesn't think on its own. Those words ultimately come from you, the human being who elected to print something. The only difference is that the AI takes from a basically anonymous source, the entirety of the internet. But my main point is that because these companies own these AI models, they are welcome to change that algorithm and therefore what the AI produces and can produce uh, at any moment without your consent. Elon Musk, for example, has explicitly modified his own AI program, Grok, to reflect his own political beliefs. For Elon, Grok became too woke when it actually reflected the viewpoint of the internet, and so he looked to adjust the algorithm, uh, fudge some numbers, and so on, to make his own AI fit with his own political beliefs. The Trump administration has similarly issued executive order to make AI less woke. And Silicon Valley executives are all too eager to please him so that, uh, you know, they don't, they are not regulated by the federal government in any respect. This all produces, I would say, a pretty odious dynamic because the AI company that you are essentially putting your ability to think on loan to does not have your own best interests at mind. There's a real question of whether it is morally permissible to put your own critical thinking and expressive skills on loan like that. Let's bring up two other brief moral concerns with AI, which include its impact on the environment and its potential violation of intellectual property rights. Because AI programs are so complex and are churning through a data set that is so large, it takes enormous data centers to keep these programs running. These data centers use an extraordinary amount of energy and pollute the environment that surrounds them, producing a tangible moral harm for their neighbors. Along these same lines, there's a real question as to whether uh, training AI on someone's copyrighted intellectual property is stealing. One controversy over AI was the discovery that they were often tra trained on materials gained from Library Genesis, or otherwise known as LibGen, an online illegal library of books, articles, and other copyrighted material. Hint, hint, this is a place where that exists. 
If academic scholars inform AI models of what they ought to say in response to a question, shouldn't they get a cut of the profits or at least have a say as to whether their materials are used to train AI? But let's get to our last and perhaps central moral concern with artificial intelligence, which, can, which is concerned with the use of artificial intelligence in the field of healthcare. Where I would argue that the central use case for artificial intelligence is as a responsibility avoidance machine. Consider that United Healthcare, one of the largest health insurance providers in the United States, used AI to evaluate medical claims made by their customers. This provides another situation of perverse incentives, where United Healthcare is positively incentivized to use the AI system to deny insurance claims. In deny claims, they did. A report came out recently that United Healthcare's AI system denied approximately 70% of claims made by their customers. The Abelson and Rosenbluth article furthermore point out that the federal government is tiptoeing towards a similar use of AI to evaluate medical claims made by Medicare as well, which will produce likely similar results. This is said to be a kind of cost cutting measure uh, where a, the use of AI can prevent unnecessary medical claims. However, I think at least more realistically, what's going on is that they're erecting additional barriers to entry to be able to actually successfully file a health insurance claim to increase the profits and decrease, uh, uh, increase profits on the part of these companies and decrease spending on the part of the federal government. And I would argue at least that that is morally wrong. In these cases, AI is used as a means to kind of veil corporate interest, right? It's not obvious that United Healthcare wants to deny you deny their own customers their medical claims so as to maximize their profits. At least it seems like what the AI is doing is giving a neutral, objective evaluation of the patient's medical claim. And it just so happens that 70% of those claims are ill-founded. But United Healthcare is not interested in learning the objective truth about what kinds of healthcare claims are legitimate. They're interested in denying the largest amount of claims made by their customer as possible. IBM once had a famous PowerPoint slide that said, AI cannot be held responsible. Therefore, AI cannot make a management decision. There is perhaps no management decision with greater consequence than denying a health insurance claim made by someone in need. In this case, the way that it's working is that AI cannot be held responsible and so AI is being put to use to make a management decision. This is also what the Jollymore article finds particularly odious about the use of ChatGPT and artificial intelligence in the context of biomedical ethics class. The whole point of this class is to learn how to responsibly make important and life-changing decisions in a healthcare context. But if you use artificial intelligence in this class, you outsource this responsibility to a corporate managed machine that may or may not weigh human interests appropriately. It's for this reason that I see no appropriate use case for AI in a biomedical ethics class and hence prohibit its use in this class. At this point, I've presented arguments both for and against the use of artificial intelligence. The truth is probably nuanced, where there are some legitimate uses for artificial intelligence and some use cases that are clearly immoral and wrong. The tricky part is deciding where exactly to draw these lines and determining which uses of AI are morally acceptable and which ought to be prohibited. Many ethicists at this point feel that what we need is a theory 
a theory that can tell us the moral considerations that we've discussed up this point should take precedence over the others, or another way, how we should think about how to weigh these moral considerations against each other. This is exactly what ethical theory is meant to do, to provide a fully fledged theory of the good that can provide a guide for how to weigh different kinds of moral considerations against each other and help us determine finally what we ought to do. This is why after this week, we'll spend some time exploring different moral theories before moving on eventually to their application within the sphere of biomedical ethics. This is so fun and I look forward to hearing what you think about this topic. Do you think I was fair to AI? Do you think that there are more advantages or disadvantages than I've said here? Uh, let me know what you think. I'm very, very interested. Next video, we will discuss what I regard as the simplest uh, moral theory, consequentialism. I look forward to hearing what you see, what you think, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.